Hello YouTube, my name is Maurice, but you probably know me under a different name, Feynman. That's the name I use on websites such as leechess.org, chess.com, or metalstorm.net. For my day job, I study particle physics and nuclear physics, but in my free time, I have hobbies like playing chess and listening to metal music. If you've seen my previous videos on this channel, you probably know that I like to also dabble a bit in some music of my own. For some time, I've also wanted to branch out a bit in what I do on this channel, so I wanted to try something different. Still music related for now, but that could change. It really depends on what you want. I'm open to anything. I could film myself playing some chess. I could review albums on, here on YouTube. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see. For this video, I want to talk about my top 10 favorite metal releases of 2023. Most of these albums I've reviewed on metalstorm.net, so if you want a more detailed discussion, go check out those written reviews. I'll link them in the description. So let's get started. Number 10, Air Not Meant For Us by Fires In The Distance. Let me start off by saying that I'm not the biggest fan of Mellow Death or Death Doom. There are specific albums of those genres that rank among my favorites of all time, such as Catatonia's Brave Murder Day, Amorphous's Tales from the Thousand Lakes, or Belacor's Stone's Reach. However, other than those examples, most of the genre is, to me, pretty boring. That's why this year's Fires in the Distance release was so surprising for me, because I found it great. It's melodic, it has this feeling of dread, and the production is just otherworldly. It just sounds massive. I'm also a sucker for piano playing, so I love all the piano melodies throughout the album. The growls are also really impressive and sound to me a bit like the performances on some Edge of Sanity or Opeth albums. In the end, it's got all that a melodic Death Doom album should have, in my opinion. It has these really exquisitely melodic passages, some really heavy moments, and throughout it, this lumbering feeling of dread, despair, melancholy, and death and doom. So I think it's no surprise that on Metal Storm, this album ranks at number one of the top 20 albums of 2023. I wouldn't put it personally at number one, as you see, but it's still a really good album. Number nine. Super Killer, A Musical Journey Between Life and Death by Kadava Fika. This is a really bizarre album. This German band used to play just simple death grind. However, this album marks a total shift in their style, embracing gothic, black metal, death, doom, you name it, and incorporating them in a really catchy style. To some people, this bizarre mix and a track list of over 20 songs might be a bit excessive and chaotic, but I just find it so crazy and entertaining that I don't really care about the length of the album. I usually then listen to it in snippets, and one can pretty much divide up the songs into four parts, starting with a more optimistic, light-hearted part, next embracing more a feeling of dread, and culminating in some really intense death metal tracks, such as this song Perennial Death. In the end, there's kind of a revitalization of that early optimistic energy. And finally, the album concludes in five cover songs. Now, usually when a metal band covers a non-metal song, it usually ends up being just a catchy, original song turned into just senseless growling. However, for these cover songs, Kadava Fika really tried to replicate the original style, and they do it really, really well. So once again, you have a wide mix of genres. You have an acid bath song, which is really intense sludge. You have a bathory song, which is, of course, Viking black metal, but you also have non-metal songs that go in a more post-punk direction. And each of these songs, Kadava Fika really nail in making them 
true to the original, whether it's really catchy in the case of the song Bad Taste or really vile in the case of New Corpse. So in the end, I find this contrast super entertaining and the band show that they're not only able to make really catchy, lighthearted rock anthems, but also really demented, screeching, extreme metal songs. Number 8, The Crisis as Condition by Terminalist. If you like Vector, go check out Terminalist. They're the next best thing in terms of technical, sci-fi, thrash metal that also has progressive leanings. This band already impressed me with their release from 2021, where they showcased their ability to not only create lightning-fast, catchy thrash music, but also slower, eerie passages that give you a feeling of dread for a dystopian sci-fi landscape. The second album is in a similar vein, retaining quality in songwriting, performance, and production, and addressing that the world is steeped in so many different crises, so why not bang your head to the apocalypse? While the guitar riffs of Terminalist are very similar to Vector, the vocals are really different. While the vocal performance of Vector was notorious with its space eagle screeching, Terminalists take a kind of safer route, sticking to more standard death metal-like growls that are probably more approachable for thrash metal fans in comparison to the more unconventional screeching of Vector. So in the end, if you want to have a great time listening to thrash metal, I definitely recommend Terminalist. Number 7. Krefluelda by Altari The band is from Iceland, and this release is their debut album. They play a style that's an experimental mix of post-metal and black metal that's really atmospheric and has this mystical aura about it. There's of course a lot of heaviness, just as I like it, but there are also really ambient moments that are really soothing, but also kind of unnerving. So if you want something to lull you in a psychedelic mood, yet also play a bit with your nerves, go try this experimental album by Altari. Number 6, Storm the Void slash Starving Grave by Necrovasion. This is the only release on this list that isn't a full album. Instead, it's an EP, specifically two songs that last only 12 minutes. Still, these two songs are probably the songs that I've listened to the most this year, and for good reason. They're expertly produced, expertly performed, they're engaging, and they're just a clever mix of the aggression of death metal and the creepiness of black metal. While the first song, Storm the Void, is more intense and right in your face, the second song, Starving Grave, has a more eerie atmosphere to it. This ominous approach that mixes some elements of doom metal into the blackened death metal is really unnerving and for me that's really satisfying. The album would have ranked a lot higher in my list if it were a full album, but being just two songs, I think it would be a bit unfair to rank it above the fully fleshed albums that you'll see in a moment. Still, if they make a full album in the future in the same vein as this EP, it's guaranteed to be among my favorites of that year. Number 5, Seven Crowns and Seven Seals by Sulphur Aeon. This is another German band, and probably pretty well known among you. For the past years, they've made consistently great death metal releases with a central theme of H.P. Lovecraft's horror mythos. Now, I'm a big fan of H.P. Lovecraft's writing, and so are a lot of other metal bands, but usually the metal bands that cover Lovecraft's mythos play either hypnotic black metal like Blue Douse Nord, or oppressive funeral doom like the band Catacombs. Sulphur Aeon do convey the creepy text passages with their lyrics, but musically wise, they're not that oppressive. Instead, their death metal is really melodic, and there are a lot of catchy sing-along passages, such as the title track. 
While I do like death metal that really pummels me into the ground, I can appreciate this more melodic approach because it makes for a really engaging and entertaining experience. So if you want some really fun death metal songs to sing along to and read along to, I definitely recommend Sulphur Aeon. Number 4, The Tread of Darkness by Kiemra. Kiemra, or maybe Siemra, I'm not sure how to pronounce it again, but they're a band from Belarus, and Belarus is a neighboring country of Poland. So you might expect from a black metal band from Belarus that they sound a bit like a Polish black metal band. Well, you'd be half right. They definitely have the aggression of Polish black metal, but they also have a lot of the Swedish melody, a style that we know from bands such as Necrophobic or Dissection. But due to this Polish aggression in their music, they end up being a very unique mix of melodic black metal. You have really headbang inducing catchy choruses such as on the song Four Riders, but you also have really eerie and oppressive music on, for example, Vomiting Void. So for those of you who are more experienced in melodic black metal releases, you might think it's not a lot of experimentation, it's not nothing new, but I find it a very enjoyable release, a very solid black metal release. It's basically melodic black metal, just the way I like it. And it's their debut album, so give them a listen, and if you enjoy them, definitely support that band. I hope to see more of them in the future. Number 3, Meng Lu, or Dream Road by Vitriolic Sage. This release definitely blew my mind when I first listened to it, and it still does after listening to it over 10 times this year. Once again, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this album title. It's in Chinese, and it means Dream Road. From that title, you might assume that this album has a very psychedelic experience. And while I wouldn't describe the atmosphere as psychedelic, it's definitely melancholic. For example, the third track is just an ambient oriental sounding track. But for the majority of the album, we have just really intense, electrifying black metal. And especially the first song, that first riff, just gets me going every time I hear it. So you have really intense tremolo picking, but you also have really exquisite and really beautiful melodies that this band play. I almost forgot to mention this, it's a one-man band. The artist behind this band just goes by the initials JL, and apparently they know a lot of languages because this album features languages such as French and Mandarin Chinese, but also Old Tibetan and some other more archaic and less well-known languages. He's also involved with another project where he shows that he also knows ancient Greek. Anyways, this guy, whoever he is, is really good at especially the lead guitar elements and the drumming I also found really impressive. It's frenetic, but it's also heartfelt, and it also sounds really unique. So it doesn't sound like a copy of some other band, really, I find. It has this really crisp production, it has this engaging songwriting. My only complaint with the album is the end of the second track. Throughout the, the tracks, you hear little instances, some audio samples of crying or whimpering, and it fits to the album cover, which also shows a crying face. However, the end of the second track, you can definitely skip, in my opinion. I don't know why they included it, but it's very indulgent on just a two-minute-long audio sample of a woman crying in a really annoying way. <laughs> so. Um, that's my only complaint with the album. Everything else is golden, uh, platinum, diamond, whatever you want to call it. Um, but just those two minutes you can skip. <laughs> so check out Vitriolic Sage if you want really beautiful and atmospheric melodies, but also really hard-hitting, energetic, electrifying, intense black metal. Number two. Petrodragonic Apocalypse, or Dawn of... Okay, I'm not reading all that. By King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Oh, 
All right, enough black metal, enough experimentation. Sometimes all I want to listen to is just a really catchy, groovy riff. And this is definitely what this album can offer. So this is a release by a really popular band. I'm actually not familiar with the band. and This is the first time that I've heard something from this band. After doing a bit of research, apparently this band play usually some psychedelic rock, and only occasionally do they lean in more into the metal side of music. In this case, this specific album I'd categorize as a mix between stoner and a bit of thrash, but primarily it's fast-paced, but just catchy stoner metal. On every song there's a catchy tune, a catchy sing-along chorus, and while it's not innovative, it's really fun and it's really effective. The lyrical themes about witches and dragons are kind of silly, but the energetic music just makes me want to sing along regardless. So if you haven't listened to this album yet, go check it out, and if you have, go listen to it again because it is so damn fun. Number 1. The Howling Silence by Warcrab Now, as is to be expected when making these top 10 lists, it's hard to pick who will end up on top. There was such good competition this year, I find, but in the end, the album that really resonated with me the most was this Warcrab album. It's a mix of sludge, doom, and death metal, and I find it's just the perfect extreme metal mix. You've basically got it all. You have ferocious riffs, really demonic vocals, you have hammering, thunderous drums, you've also got slower moments where you have isolated, eerie bass playing, and throughout it, it's oppressive, but it's also really groovy and catchy. It kind of reminds me of early Bolt Thrower, specifically their album Realm of Chaos, because there you also have really chunky, plodding riffs, but you also have chaotic, lightning-fast guitar solos that sound like they're played by Carrie King. So in the end, while there were some great black metal releases that are among my favorites of this year, and I like the simple, catchy melodies of bands like King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, in the end what I come back to so often is this pummeling, destructive mix of sludge, death, and doom that is Warcrab. That concludes my list of top 10 favorite metal releases of 2023. I hope you will check out those albums and enjoy them as much as I did. And let me know in the comments section what your favorite albums of 2023 were. I look forward to reading your responses and listening to your suggestions. Until we meet again, stay metal.